How's it going, guys? This is Dr. Weefer, and I want to talk to you guys about cladograms. The reason is that they are very important uh, in understanding evolutionary biology. They are increasing in numbers when we talk about the uh, growing curriculum in biology that emphasizes evolution. We're seeing more and more of them on all sorts of tests. So, uh, what is a cladogram? A cladogram is going to be this tree diagram that is not only going to show the uh, relationship between species like a phylogenetic tree of some sort, but it's also going to show the actual order of events. So a couple of things to keep in mind. Every time you see a line go up, that is going to be another event in time. So the further you go down this phylogenetic tree, the more recent you get. Also, you might notice that one looks like it goes by itself, and then you have the rest in a group. This basically is what's going on. So what's going to happen is that you have one out group that is not like the other. So if we want to start building this, let's look at these right here. Which one of these does not belong? Well, this guy right here is not blue. So we can put this right here as the out group. So if they ever ask what is the out group, just look which one doesn't belong, and you put that away from the rest of them. Now the rest right here are going to be blue. So right here on this line right here, on the new emerging feature, everything from here, you could actually imagine taking a scissor and snipping it right there. Everything past that line is going to be the color blue. Okay? So... What's next? Which ones are not going to be long? Which one is going to be different from all the other blue ones? And it looks like right here, this is the simplest one right there. So everything after this is blue. Now, this is the outgroup of the smaller set. Okay, but keep in mind if they ask what the outgroup is of this entire cladogram, it's of course going to be this guy right here. Okay, so uh, which one of these is not going to belong? So we're going to have one left by itself. The rest are going to continue. If you look right here, looks like all of these guys have these red eyes, and this one does not. So this is going to not belong here. So uh, this line right here is going to represent a perhaps hail-like uh, structure. Okay, this line shows that this diamond with nothing on it does not have a tail. This is going to have an emerging tail. So now we have this guy over here, so we can put on this line right here, eyes. So this could be the new emerging feature will be eyes. So now let's look at the creatures with all of the eyes. Does one look different from the other? Well, now we get a little tricky uh, because we say to ourselves, okay, two of these guys have legs, and, and uh, but, they, but they all have tails, okay? Well, uh, we come to a, a moment of parsimony. Okay, there's a concept called parsimony. Parsimony is uh, when you are faced with making a decision that the most simple explanation is the one that we accept. Okay, because here uh, we have, okay, we have these guys that, that have legs and the other one doesn't. So I'm going to put this one over here away from the others, and then these guys are going to emerge with legs right here. But is it possible that this tail... Uh, fell off and that this replaced the tail, okay, and this guy also grew legs and then all of a sudden he lost his legs, he or she, right? It, I guess we can call it, okay? Now, the idea of parsimony is that these wild and crazy things could happen and they are possible, but we are only going to accept the, um, the solutions that are simple, okay? So that's called, a t that's a concept called parsimony, okay? Uh, so, uh, this feature right here would be the emergent of legs. So, let's look right now at a practical example, something very similar that has appeared on an actual exam, or at least very close to it. All right, so here's an actual test-like situation where they would give you different organisms and they would set up a cladogram and you may be asked to uh, fill this in. So what are the branching points going from oldest to newest? It would be a vertebral column, which is considered a backbone. Hinge jaw, which means that uh, it could open and close. Um, four legs. And then amnion. Some people get confused about what an amnion is. Well, think about what an amnionic sac is. It's a fluid-filled sac that holds the baby in um, in the uterus, okay, for example, when a woman's water breaks, okay, the amniotic sac breaks. Also, amnion is considered a watertight egg, so this is going to be organisms that lay eggs outside the body on land as opposed to in the water. Okay, so if we look right here, what is going to be the outgroup? Well, 
here the first branch is the vertebrae column. So which one of these is the outgroup that does not have the vertebrae column? It is the lancelet. Lancelet does not have the vertebrae. Then of the ones, all of these have a vertebrae column, a vertebral column. So how are we going to divide them into everybody having the hinge jaws? And then we have, do we have one that doesn't have a hinge jaw? Well, look at this right here. This lamprey, kind of scary looking if you ask me. I may have nightmares about this guy tonight. I don't know about you guys, but look at this thing. It does not have um, any hinge jaws. Okay, so of the ones that do have hinge jaws, we have one by itself and the rest are going to have four legs. So I think it's pretty easy to say that the bass do not have uh, four legs. Okay, now what are we left with? We um, at first glance, it looks like these guys are going to be looking the same, and you're going to put, this is probably the number one mistake, that you put the frogs and the turtles together here, and then you have the leopard here. But the key is really to look at these new emerging features. So yeah, of course, they all have four legs, and these guys are green, and they look the same, and they don't have hair, so you're going to want to put them together. But look what it's asking for. It's saying to separate them by who has the amnion in or not. And that requires a little bit of your knowledge. So the one with the watertight egg is going to be the turtle, which lays eggs, and the leopard, which is a placental mammal. So that's why we're going to group based on this, the leopard and the turtle. And then, of course, the frog will be um, outside of them. So the leopard and the turtle based on this are more closely related. So how do scientists put these cladograms together? Well, they're going to use emerging features such as this, but to support their cladograms, they may use DNA sequences, or they may use protein sequences, okay? So the most accurate is DNA, and that's where uh, in AP Bio, there is a BLAST lab comes in, so you could actually use computer programs to compare DNA sequences and see where they actually fit in. So one thing I want to mention is that each node right here or branching point is going to represent a common ancestor. So this common ancestor actually can create these subgroups. We can call these groups uh, monophyletic groups, polyphyletic groups, paraphyletic groups. Here's the difference. So right here we have a branching point right here. This is a common ancestor to the leopard and the turtle. This is, right here is going to make this a monophyletic group. The monophyletic group means that the leopard and turtle share the common ancestor right at this point. Now we could also look at what happens if uh, most of them are going to be descendants of a common ancestor in a group, and one organism off to the side is going to not belong to the common ancestor. This case is going to be called a paraphyletic group. So the leopard and the turtle and the frog are a paraphyletic group because most of them come from the same ancestor. And lastly, a polyphyletic group is going to be something where its ancestors are going to, some of them are going to be in common, but some of the members of the group are going to have distant ancestors way back over here. So I hope that helps, guys, and I shall see you guys next time. Good luck on the studying.